Sawtree's men making another raid. You know what we're after. Throw it out and be quick about it. All right, hand them out. That's not all. There's one more. That's mine. Yes, folks, it's Dean Autry making another raid on your time with his Radio Riders, broadcasting from Radio Ranch. We're about to bust right into your homes with some real rates, music, and singing. <laughs> Nevertheless, we're going to give you some real rates, music, and singing. A long, long time ago, as all you folks should know, Uncle Noah built himself an ark. For 40 days and nights, the rain was sure a fright, and the animals nearly tore his ark apart. The duck went quack, the cow went through, cock a doodle doo. The old tom catcher raised an awful row. The little pig squealed, the billy goes back. The bull frog said, Biggest rain we've had. Uncle Noah's Ark's a madhouse now. The hogs is in cattle and south of the air. Even the long eared jacket was there. Quack! The owl said, Who? Woof! Cock a doodle doo. All were there on Uncle Noah's Ark. At last the sun did shine, to the winter bright and fine, and Uncle Noah thought it was time to land. He couldn't open the door, got his hammer on the shore, and the animals roared and growled to beat the band. The duck went crack, cow went broke, he said, cock a doodle doo. The old Tom catcher raised an awful row. The little pig squealed, the billy goes down, the little frog said, take it rain me mad. Uncle Noah's arc's the madhouse now. The house is cattle and south of the air. Even the long ear jacket was there. Quack! How did you? Whoa! All were there and not the lower dog. We're now turning the microphone over to Frankie and Betsy Baxter, President and Vice President of the National Thunderwriters Club. You're on the air, kids. It's all yours. First, I want to ask all of you to. First, I want to... Pardon the static, folks. First, I want to ask all of you to join our National Thunder Riders Club so you can come out here to our vacation camp and see a radio broadcast put on like it should be. Riding, roping, real horses, real guns, real cowboys, all you boys... And the girls, too. We don't want any girls. We do, too. Now, in reply to your letters, boys, and girls, as to how we came to select the name, Thunder Riders for our club. One well, day, Frankie and I were having a horse race on the desert. We were riding like the wind, just having a lot of fun, when all of a sudden, we heard something that sounded like a roar of thunder. Thunder! It's going to rain! Rain nothing? Well, there isn't a cloud in the sky. That's from Thunder Valley. I heard it once before.
call our club the Thunder Riders. The legend is a reality to Betsy and me. And if we ever see those riders again, we'll sure tell you more about them. Thank you, Frankie and Betsy. Thank you. And remember all you kids that can't come out to the ranch. You can form a Thunder Riders Club in your own town and ride with us every afternoon. Just send in your name, and we'll send you a pattern so that your mother can make you a costume. Everybody ready? You. Yep. Here they come. Will the Thunder Riders get there in time? And that, folks, you will learn when you tune in tomorrow. Good afternoon. Radio Rank, now signing off. Say, is our ranch becoming popular? And all on account of your broadcast. Why, our guests are coming on trains and horses and an automobile. And now, they're arriving by airplane. You said that ranch is deserted. It's deserted, all right. What about the fortune and radium you promised us? You'll get your radium. Gentlemen, I am firmly convinced that this is the site of the buried city of Mew. And with proper excavation, we'll find more than radium. We'll find secrets that have been lost to the world for thousands of years. Welcome to Radio Ranch, gentlemen. <laughs> Quite a surprise to see you playing around here. Uh, Beeson is my name, Professor Beeson. I'm Dean Autry. Do you think that we might secure accommodations? Sure, we can take care of you. This way, gentlemen, please. In a vine-covered shack in the mountains, bravely fighting the battle of time, is a dear one who wears a If I could recall all the heartaches, dear old daddy, I called you to that. If I could erase the line from your face and bring back the gold to your heart, if God would but grant me the power just to turn back the pages of time. Nobody saw you come up here. I don't want my secret laboratory discovered. I sneaked away. So you're the one that took that caliber castle cyclometer tube that the radio engineer was looking for. Shh. This is scientifically important to me. Look here, sis. This shows you exactly how to make a direction finder. And I just made one. What's a direction finder? Well, when you hear something on the radio, this will tell you exactly what direction it's coming from. Look, I'll show you. That is, I'll show you if I made this thing right. See? It's pointing two degrees west of north. That means the music's coming from San Francisco. There's those funny signals again. Frankie, look! The direction finder is standing on its head!
it's your time. They seem to stand for anything. Okay. You know those funny signals I've been getting for the last two weeks? Yeah. Well, I got them again tonight. And my direction finder says they're coming from straight down. Hey, do you suppose there's anything to any of those books that Frankie's been reading? About a world underground with people and cities and everything? <laughs> Why, of course there's something to them. Let's go see those scientists that came today. Maybe they can tell us something about it. Maybe they can. But the signals were coming from the center of the Earth. And I wanted you to explain it to me, Professor. I see that you have a perfect understanding of radio beams. You probably encountered some unusual internal interference. Uh, undoubtedly magnetic static. Yes, but, but the signal sounded like human signal. Static. Just static. However, I'll give the medicine thought and uh, look into it further a little later. Did you ever see anything like this? Peculiar little fellow, isn't it? Ah, an interesting example of antediluvian Americana. Where did you get it? Found it at the head of Thunder Valley. Could you lead my colleagues to the spot? Gladly. We'll appreciate it very much. But we'll have to get an early start. I have a broadcast at 2 o'clock, and if we miss it, we'll lose our contract. We'll say 8 o'clock. Good. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Good night. Professor. Good night. Heard everything? Autry's radio program and his singing make this ranch popular. Without him, there would be nothing here to interest anyone. Tomorrow morning, when he leads Cooper and Saunders to the spot where he found that idol, your job is to see that he doesn't come back. A Moranian. Alive? Impossible. I tell you it is. gain some strength when we get down to the 20,000 foot level.
Majesty, the Queen. Did I receive your report correctly? Yes, Your Majesty. Her Majesty is waiting, I know. We welcome your return. Your Imperial Majesty, I have to report. Silence! You are not here to report. I have seen everything. You are here to be commended for your loyalty and skill in having safely returned with your wounded comrade without once having been seen by a surface man. I do so commend you. Conduct him to the radium reviving chamber. Here's the proof. And there's the bullet hole. You perforated his oxygen tank. Evidently, they can't function on the air we breathe. future of all my subjects are in jeopardy. For my part, I should send to the Garden of Life and there capture them when they return. No. The entrance to the Garden of Life must be destroyed. They must never be able to find it again. the Garden of Life and destroy the entrance so that no surface man may ever find it again. Yes, Your Majesty. Now, full fledged member. Be seated. We will now continue with our regular business. Has anyone any suggestions for the motto of our club? All for one and one for all. To the rescue is mine. No, it's all. Do a good turn, Dave. Thank you, Dale. Your suggestion is a good one. But that's the Boy Scouts' motto. And we must have one of our own. Listen. There's that thunder sound. That's the same sound that we heard the day we saw the thunder riding. Maybe they're riding again. Getting a turn. Isn't that Jim's horse? Something must have happened to it. Maybe the real thunder rider's got it. To the rescue. That's our motto. To the rescue. To the rescue! <laughs> Here. All you kids break up into parties of two. We'll search this whole country. I don't all go the same way. 
Fetch an arrow right up toward Thunder Valley. Look, a smoke signal. It must be Gene. We got a broadcast at 2 o'clock. If we miss it, we lose our contract. And that means we'll lose Radio Red. We'll have to ride like a dickens. You and Betsy ride double. Explain yourself, Argo. If we can capture Gene Autry, Radio Ranch would soon become deserted. And the end of our underground kingdom would forever remain undiscovered. Captain of the Thunder Riders on the wireless telephone. Captain of the Thunder Guards reporting. Gene Autry approaches Thunder Valley. Captured him. Yes, Your Imperial Majesty. Thunder Guards, forward! Caught that limb. I'll say it is. Look, our Thunder Riders Club. Come on, we'll save you. Hurry up, throw it, Dale. Hurry up, 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 Be nervous. Take your time. Gene fails to get here, we're sunk. He said he'd be back by one o'clock, and here it is almost two. Gee, I was scared. I was afraid the rope would break. What happened, Frankie? Well, the we'll real We'll tell you all about it later. We've just got time to get back to the ranch for the broadcast. If we we'll miss it, we'll lose the contract. And ready your ranch. It's time to be on the air. What do we do? It's Dean! I thought you said you took care of Autry. Sharp must have missed. 
Radio Link is on the air. This is Gene Autry offering another broadcast. Let's go! Now when I want my britches pressed and want my clothes to look the best, I call on Oscar. <laughs> That's me. I call on Oscar. I'm Oscar. And if my saddle needs some soap, I know the guy that's got the dope. I call on Pete. I'm Pete. I call on Pete. Yes, sir. Now these two boys are my right-hand men. They prove their worth again and again. If I want more heat or electric fan, I call on Oscar. I get it. Or call on Pete. <laughs> Now, when I write my girl a line and want it to get there on time, I call on Pete. Call on me. I call on Pete. Call. Or if I find by morning mail that by noon I'll be in jail, I call on Oscar. Call on Oscar. I call on Oscar. Call on me. Huh? Now, there's nothing I tell you that these fellows cannot do. If I want the moon or a star or two, I call on Oscar. That's my name. I call on Pete. I've been there. Now my girl has got a sister, that's Virginia wine to sister. I'll send Oscar. Oh, send him. Well, I'll send him. Oh, send Oscar. They say that she's not so pretty. She craves marriage, that's a pity. I'll send him. Oh, send him. I'll send Oscar. Let him go. She's got a million bucks and talk another million in the vault. If she stays single, it ain't my fault. Let me go. I'll go, Gene. I'll go myself. Well, yeah. I'll go. On with the show, folks. Yesterday, when you tuned out our radio show, the Thunder Riders were riding to the rescue. Well, here's what happened after that. Cut it out. The stagecoach has been attacked. The bandits are getting saved. Why don't the Thunder Riders come to the rescue? Coming. Run for your life! Gee, you were swell, Daddy. You took it as real as life. Turn over, Daddy. I'm supposed to bandage you. He's dead. Somebody shot him. I don't see how any of us could have done it. Why, I can't understand. It's all very simple. Your rifle was loaded. Are you insinuating that I shot my partner? No, of course not. But you'll have to admit that this is a case for the sheriff. Everybody says you did. And the sheriff's coming to take you to town. That's what worries me. If they lock me up, I'll never be able to discover the real murder. Oscar's guarding the window. His gun's loaded with blanks. 
He would church anyway. He promised. now at a shack in Thunder Canyon. Lead your riders there and capture him. Remember, if you fail, you peril Murania, and your life becomes forfeit. Do you understand? Yes, Your Majesty. Just a minute, Lieutenant, and you'll see the exact location of the shack. Transfer the view of the shack to the Thunder Guard's screen. Very good, Your Majesty. Thunder Guards, alert! Coming in. Get in there and hide. More surface approach. We cannot allow anyone to interfere with our mission. After them. Change clothes with this fella. It's the only way to save you from the other. They're coming back. What if they find you out? They won't. I'll lead them away and come back after you later. Don't let him get away. Gene Autry. He escaped. What if Gene couldn't get away? 
Then they'll have to go to their underground kingdom with them. I do not blame you, Lieutenant Paul, for trying to escape the fate that awaits you. Advance! The Queen desires your presence at once, sir. your helmet and get a breath of real air? I understand a man in disgrace does not care to show his face. Only one life to lose? You insult me in my throne room? I, uh, you dare to wear your oxygen helmet in my presence? Yes, but I... Off with his helmet! Your Majesty, Lieutenant Paul is not himself. I beg... Jean Autry! A surface man in Muranium! Welcome! How do you like our world? Well... <laughs> I think the dampness and dead air of your land is more suited to rats than moles. You are indeed a brave man. Now let us see whether you are also a wise one. At ease. Come with me. You are the first surface man to invade our empire, and your knowledge of Muranium must die with you. Take him away. My dear Argo, you may personally build up the voltage. You want me. The prisoner is in the death chamber. All is prepared. Build up 200,000 volts for the chamber of death. You may now start Autry's charred body on its trip to the Cavern of the Dunes. How much longer are we to wait for the word that will start the revolution? Do not be impatient. The clever Argo has paid our lives for a purpose, and we must wait. Where are the hand weapons you promised us? I have perfected this Z-ray lithium gun. It is designed to blind anyone it is turned on. Who's that? Spy captured! Oh, 
by the Dean Autry. We must kill him. Go on. Wait a minute. Wait. Argo has saved this surface man's life as he has saved ours. But for a different purpose. Why should the Lord High Chancellor want to save him? For a vivisection. So that we may take him to our laboratories. Stand back. Get in that corner. Gentlemen, what's this? Gene Autry has escaped. If the Queen learns I saved him from the death chamber, all of us will burn for your carelessness. Autry has escaped. You must find him at once and bring him to our rebel headquarters. We've got to find Gene so he can get back to Radio Ranch in time to make his next broadcast. That must be the entrance to Murania. Come on. There's a rope ladder. We're certainly on the track of a large deposit of radium. In that case, we'd better fly back to Radio Ranch and get some dynamite to start blasting. Right. After we locate a way to enter uranium, we'll have access to enough radium to fill a bushel bag. They're taking the ladder away. We're trapped. Royal Guard, alert. Proceed immediately to your headquarters and capture the surface man.
missed him. Archer must be hiding on that hill. Surround the hill. First section to the left, second to the right. Someone's used it. And they built a fire. They must be hiding in a tunnel. You've got to find it just in time. Say, we've got to broadcast at 2 o'clock. It's almost time now. We'll never make it back to the ranch by 2 o'clock. We'll have to. If Gene doesn't go on the air, we'll lose the contract and the ranch, too. And we'll borrow their plane. Stand still, I've got you covered. Now you can lower your hands, but don't move too fast, because something might happen. Start your motor and take off at once. Somebody's stealing the plane. You stay here. Fly straight to radio ring. Don't lose any time getting there. Those horses belong to the Baxter kids. They must have been the ones who took the plane. They're headed back to the ranch. What are you going to do there? Wait and see. Radio ranch. Falling radio ranch. Now we'll hear from that rollicking bandit crew, the Radio Ranch Quartet. Here they are. The program will be over in a few minutes. Yes, if Gene doesn't appear pretty soon, we're sunk. Oh, she's done and gone away, picked up bucket yesterday. My cross that gal who lives up on the hill. She's a big night. Oh, Radio Ranch. 
Who's calling? This is Frankie speaking from a cabin place. Gene's gonna sing. Hook him up. Okay. Right. Yes, folks, it's Gene Autry speaking to you from an airplane high over radio range. I'm going to sing. I'm getting a moon's eye view of the world. I have often wondered when down on the ground how the old world looks to Mr. Moon. And now I can see why he smiles all the while. He's watching the sweethearts as they soon. I'm getting a moon's eye view of the world floating around in the sky. I get a thrill floating in the air, buzzing around like a fly. No wonder he smiles at you folks on the ground. He knows that life is a merry-go-round. I'm getting a moon's eye view of the world floating around in the sky. Something's wrong. The water's dead. What do we do? I know what I'm going to do. Stay back. That's all for today, folks. Take it away, Eddie. I'm going to try a dead stick landing with a load of dynamite. You're crazy. Get over The dynamite! Throw it overboard and I'll try to straighten out the plane. Frankie and Betsy away. Well, we'd better make sure about Audrey. Right after Gene signed off, it sounded as if the plane was in trouble. We didn't see any sign of Gene, and now Frankie and Betsy have disappeared. We just heard from them by wireless. They were in a plane. It might have crashed. Did they give their location? No, but they were heading toward the ranch. We'll have to find them. To the rescue! <laughs> Still alive. He's wearing a Meridian outfit. He must have been in the underground kingdom. Do you realize what that means? If we can revive him, he can tell us how to get into Morania. We'll take him to our excavation. must have happened to us. You stay here and we'll go and look around. Sure, it's their horses. Where did this come from? Be quiet. I'm 
Dennis, they're holding Frankie and Betsy prisoners down there. If they are, we're going to get them. I'd like to see Audrey's face when he learns that Frankie and Betsy were captured by the Marinians. We'll tell him all about it when he wakes up, if he does. We've got work to do. But that's for a big call to stay where we were. Well, they might need our help. Look, they're seen. But where's Frankie and Betsy? Did you find them? They're prisoners down in Urania. We've got to save them. To the rescue! To the rescue! tell you nothing. Not even to save your life? Not even to save my life, unless I can also save Frankie and Betsy. Let me prove that your friends are alive and well. Bring Frankie and Betsy to me at once. Bring the prisoner to the control room. If he tells the Queen I allowed him to escape, I'll be arrested. Trouble may start sooner than we expect. You mean the revolution? Precisely. Stay here and report to me any developments. It operates every electrical and mechanical operation of Murania. Excited, lady. We're just taking charge of uranium. I've got this one, too. Lock that door, Oscar, and then we're all team. Who are you? It's Oscar and Pete for the rescue. How about getting Frankie and Betsy and going back to the ranch? We're getting tired of this crazy place. Stop it! I command you! Ah! Take down, you! Okay, Frankie and Betsy on the television screen. Now I will be able to prove to you that your young friends are alive and well. Take 
them at once to our headquarters. And don't let them escape under pain of death. Then what shall we do with them? Leave that to me. That doesn't look much like they're going to be brought up here. Argo is deliberately disobeying my command. He'll suffer for this. He's the man that released me from the death chamber so that the revolutionists could study my breathing structure. The revolutionists? Broadcast a proclamation. Oh, no, you don't. But I must. It's the only way to quell the revolution. And tell your soldiers that we have you prisoner in your control room? Don't you realize it's the only way to save Frankie and Betsy? How do I know I can trust you? My word is good. Right. We're going to rescue Frankie and Betsy. Broadcasting along. Death to Argo by order of the Crown. Death to Argo by order of the Crown. The hour has struck. Report to your state. We are dethroning the queen, and by night, a new dynasty will have control of the palace. Good! The hour! Our time has come! This is Rebel headquarters. You fellas stay out here and keep watch. James! Are you all right? I've been worried about... Death to the queen! We march on the palace at once! To the palace! On to the palace! They'd like to see him! Break the door down! Stand back from that door! What are you going to do? Melt it down with the disintegrator ray! Turn it on full power! I don't dare risk it. That would lose control. Going back with me and tell him who killed Tom Baxter. I don't know anything about it. You know plenty. Sharp told me everything before he died. Sure, I killed Tom Baxter. But how are you going to prove it? 
You'll never make the sheriff believe you didn't do it. I think you're wrong there, partner. <laughs> that is, if Frankie learned anything about television down in Murania. All right, get moving. Let's go. Well, that sure clears Gene. But how did you ever figure out this television thing? Well, I've been working on it for a long time. And all I've needed is this little gadget. And I brought it from the Morania that you wouldn't believe in. A long, long time ago, as all you folks should know, Uncle Noah built himself an ark. For 40 days and nights, the rain was sure a fright. The animals nearly tore his ark apart. The horses and cattle and plows of the air. Even the long-eared jackets are there. Whack! Whoop! They all said who? All were there in Uncle Noah's arms. 